have a meet and greet with um, our new high school principal or the successful candidate. We're live. Okay, we're going to call the Tuesday, September 6, 2022 uh, special board of education meeting to order. Everyone, please silence your electronic devices and we will have the Pledge of Allegiance, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God and indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okay, thank you. And we need a motion for one or all of the personnel considerations. I'll make a motion. What are, what are the numbers? Two one through two six. I, I'm, I'll make a motion for two one through two six. Okay, Mr. McFerrin, a second. Mrs. Second. Burns, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motions pass. Uh, Next uh, meeting will be on September 14th, 2022 at 630 in the high school. That's where we're doing awards, right? Correct? For middle school? Yes. All right. And I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mr. McFerrin, Mrs. Burns, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we just, we're going to stay live stream, correct? Yep. Invite our. Are we on? Yep. I just uh, texted Ryan and asked him to join us. I believe I mentioned to the board um, we had uh, 16 to 18 candidates apply for the position that we posted. There he is right there. That we posted um, in. Uh, the end of beginning of July, we, we got it out there. We met as a, a small committee and we decided on what our priorities are for the building and then included that in our posting. And uh, Ryan was one of the five candidates that we had come in for the interview process, which began boy, almost three weeks ago. And um, we we're very impressed by him and very pleased that he's able to join us tonight. And uh, I asked Ryan to Basically, just tell us a little bit about himself and his professional pathway that led us led us to him or him to us. Welcome, Ryan. Hey, everybody. How are you? Um, just a little bit about me, huh? So, I this is my fourth year uh, as middle school, high school principal. So, seven twelve at Hunter Tannersville. Prior to being the principal, I was a math slash business teacher at Hunter for 11 years. So I have dual certification math and business. Um, so I taught like 50-50, more lean towards math in the, the later stages of um, my teaching career. You know, when I was a teacher there, I did, did it all really. You know, I advised classes, I you know did fundraisers, I coached baseball. Well, before I had kids, I have three children all girls, eight, six, and four. They all started school today, so they're super excited. Um, before I had children, I coached all three sports that Hunter had to offer, soccer, basketball, and baseball. Um, I got recruited to play baseball in college and then ruptured my Achilles tendon and kind of cut that short a little bit. Uh, but I coached everything. I had kids and I kind of, you know, prioritized where I wanted to be with coaching and I stuck with uh, basketball. So I coached girls varsity basketball for uh, eight or nine years at Hunter before I moved into the principalship. Um, so that's really my my journey at Hunter. I did teach at Del High before I came to Hunter for three years. That was my first you know, teaching experience was at Delaware Academy and I taught math and business there as well. So. And Ryan also has his school district leader certification. Yeah. So yeah, I did both. I did it the, the program through Niagara University and got both simultaneous. So I am district and business certified. Yeah. 
There you go. What questions do you have for Ryan? Oh, and uh, just as a reminder of timeline, um, the resolution uh, to approve Ryan's hiring would be at our September 14th board meeting. And um, we had anticipated him beginning around October 23rd. Sorry, October 20. I think that's about right. What we're going to do is we're going to have a week of overlap, 24th, a week of overlap so that he could uh, spend that week with the outgoing principal and um, get a more intimate uh, experience and understanding some of the things that we're working on. We may move that back a couple days. Um, we want to talk to Ryan and his existing uh, school district about what would be most beneficial for everybody involved. Uh, Bill. Sorry, I had to come off mute first. Well, first of all, congratulations, Ryan. Appreciate uh, it. Thank you. Mo moving up to the big city, I see. Going yeah. to Ravina from uh, from your other previous locations. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we have um, found within the high school, right? You're you're going to be the high school principal. Um, over, I've had I have three kids myself, um, and they're one just graduated from high school, and two others are in high school. Um, I I think we're one of the things that, that the board has has um, asked for improvement is in the visibility of the principal. What is your kind of philosophy with getting out, you know, kind of meeting the kids, being visible, you know, being present in the building, whether it be for, um, you know, in school kind of activities or even the extracurricular activities, because I think um, that would, um, you know, the presence of the principal, um, I think is is big at least to myself and and want to hear hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, no, I I would you know agree totally that visibility is key for sure. Um, I do my best to be at as much as I can possibly be. Um, I am a father of three children and will sometimes have to you know they they are just getting into sports and stuff as as well. So I will you know have children, but I agree. But like being visible, there's no better way to to connect connect with a student and being visible at things outside of school, things that they're interested in inside of school, you know, sporting events, concerts, plays, you know, clubs, all that stuff. So I agree and, and I plan on not changing. I think if you would, were to call the people that I work for now and ask them, you know, how visible am I? Um, that's a big part of who I am. You know, I, I try to make it to a lot of, as, as much stuff as I can. Um, you know, I'm going to come to Ravina and I know, you know, teachers at Cobble Skill that are going to coach basketball. So it's, you know, you network with people and you just, you know, you do what you can. And, and I, I do agree that being visible is important and I will be visible for sure. Thank you. And Ryan is a proven presence in his community, although Hunter Tannersville is smaller. Um, life doesn't get any less complex. School is a school. <laughs> and, um, has uh, a real strong relationship with the students uh, in his building. Building. Well, the, the only other thing I want to say is I, I agree with you. Obviously, being a parent, parent of three children, we understand that you know, family, family comes first. Um, I, I'm a big believer in that. Um, so, so you have my support and, uh, and understanding that you have a family. Yeah, I appreciate that. They they enjoy coming with dad to things. You know, there's certain things that I'll bring them to, and certain things that not. You know, four year old isn't gonna be quite as you know entertained at certain things as the eight-year-old would be but you know they come to to the outside sporting events their mom you know their mom actually graduated from Ravina um, so we've been to track meets and, and stuff like that as well there so they enjoy the outside stuff a little bit uh, they're going to enjoy the swimming pool for sure you know they they did swimming lessons there when they were little when they were little my eight-year-old did swimming lessons my six-year-old also um, at that pool so I'm pretty familiar with the area um, and I'm excited to, you know, not only just incorporate myself, but, you know, be visible with my children as well. I have uh, uh, two questions. Uh, one, more importantly, uh, being a big baseball coach, uh, what team do you root for? In the ah, well, the, the team that I root for right now is not doing very good. Um, the Yankees? Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. We'll, we're, we'll come out of it. I just want to check, see if you're a Red Sox fan, you know, like Bernsey, or if you're on the good side like us Yankee people. But yeah. <laughs> the other, uh, the real question I have for you is, you know, one of the challenges 
you know, with being a school leader or principal is, you know, we have uh, teachers that are brand new with one, two, three years experience. And we have teachers that are, you know, have 25, 30 years experience. Uh, and uh, they teach in different ways and they need to be mentored in different ways. You know, what kind of approach do you have when it comes to that? You know, I, you, I like to let teachers be who they are, right? I think the worst thing that we can do is we go in and try to change somebody to, you know, personality wise. I said this in my interview, um, I challenge teachers to try new things. I think that there's no better way to grow than to try something that they've seen or try something that they've heard or they've seen other people do. So in terms of mentoring, you know, a, a first year teacher or a second year teacher may not mesh well with a 30, you, you know, a 30 year veteran. So pairing them, you know, personality wise, not, you know, when I pick mentors now, I don't like to pair somebody with somebody that is completely like them because then they're not going to go outside of their comfort zone. They're going to do the things that, you know, they're used to doing and that they see doing. So I like to pair teachers and mentor teachers so that they're willing to take that risk, whether it's, you know, using a different technology or trying something in the, in the classroom that they may not have, you know, had the, not the courage to try, but, you know, taking a risk is sometimes years and been a principal for four years, but I'm going to be brand new there. You know what I mean? So it's going to be the same. I'm going to also need to be mentored into the, to the culture and the climate of, of Ravina. Um, and I'll have to come out of my comfort zone as well. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Brian, I didn't know if you could, could Dr. Bailey, is it okay if Brian just maybe briefly talks about the WISE program that he started? Um, because I think it aligns really well to some of our district initiatives. Yeah, so um, when I when I was hired at Hunter, however many years ago, 15 years ago, they had this program that had they, they'd been using and they actually asked me about it in my interview. And we all know, like, you get into an interview and they ask you a question that you have no answer for and you're like, ah. <laughs> I don't really know. So they asked me if I had any familiarity with this WISE program. Um, so it's like an individualized senior experience. That's, I'm drawing a blank on what the W stands for, to be honest with you, but individualized senior experience or the ISE. Um, so basically what it is, it's an internship slash research thing that seniors can partake in. It replaces the credits of um, government slash economics and English 12. Uh, so if a senior is taking a college level course or an AP level course, they can't replace that credit. It's just that Eng uh, English 12 credit and government and e uh, echo. So what it allows them to do is they have to have a mentor within the building um, and, and they have to meet with that mentor X amount of times. They have to write in a journal X amount of times. And, and really they can go out into the community um, and they can try something that they think that they're interested in. So just to give you a few examples of some of the projects that students have done at Hunter is you have a senior that, you know, you ask them, what are you going to do when you go to college or what are you going to major in? And sometimes they don't know. Um, so the WISE program gives them the opportunity to test out that I don't know. So we've had students that have mentored teachers and they've gotten into writing lesson plans and, you know, prepping for class. And it's not just an eight to three job, like it looks like from, from the outside looking in. And, you know, we've had a student has went in and interned at the physical therapy place in town and they've went to Hunter Mountain and they've, they've interned up there. 
And really the, the most powerful part of it is at the end, they have to do a presentation and they get to invite, you know, they have to send out invitations and they get to do a presentation about their experience. And, and what I found about, you know, four or five years in is that the students who come out of this program with, that's not what I want to do with my life is just as powerful as the students that come out with, that is what I want to do. Um, you know, the, the person who shadowed or interned at the physical therapist went to Sage, did his thing, and now he's a physical therapist. We've had numerous students do teaching because, you know, they can do internships right in, in the building. And they're like, no way, like, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And some have went on to the military and some have went on to college to explore a different route. But really, if, if you get to the end of that project and you, and you've supplanted, that's not what I want to do. How much time and money have we saved you in those first two semesters of college? You know, so it is pretty powerful when I first took wise over. There was no rubric or anything so so basically it was my judgment call at the end of the year whether these students got echo and government and, and english 12 credit and that's not the type of i'm math guy math brain so i mean points for everything because numbers don't really lie right so i created a contract for the wise program so for every meeting they attended they get x amount of points for every uh journal entry that they did they get x amount of points so that they knew at the end this is the amount of points that I need to get credit and, and not. So the, the contract is something that I came up with and um, numerous other schools use my contract now. So it, it's pretty cool, but the experience itself is, is awesome. And if we talk to some of the students that have done it, there's actually teachers at Hunter now that, that graduated from there that did the wise program and it's pretty powerful for sure. Yeah. So I had a quick question. Um, is that a full year program or is it a half year program? No. How, so, how yeah. Um, in our school, I, there's other schools that do it like Socrates does it and they're way bigger than, than we are. So I would have to get like a bigger school model to be honest with you, but some schools do a full year program where they do like an English portion in the beginning, they call it like wise English where they learn how to write journal entries and they learn how to do the things, the writing portion and the speaking portion, because they do have to give a, an oral report or, or a presentation at the end. And some students are super uncomfortable with, with getting up there and giving a presentation and not reading off the slideshow and writing bullets and how to be effective uh, speaker to a crowd of people. So they do like a wise English in the first half, like the first semester. And then the experiences in the second semester we don't have that luxury because we're limited with the number of teachers and sections that we can offer. So ours is just second half of the year. Um, whatever they happen to be in echo or pig, they get that credit. And if they're in English 12, but what I found is that when I didn't have the contract, people were doing it just to get out of the classes. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, right. I didn't do this and get out of economics and, and English 12. But as soon as you, you measure, make it measurable and you put that contract in there, to where they have to meet checkpoints and standards along the way, then you start seeing the more, you know, students who aren't going to give up those classes. We had numerous students do wise on top of all of those classes. So I'm not going to come out of my English class and I'm not going to come out of economics and, and the government. I want to be in those classes as well. It just raised the level of, of the, the um, program by, by implementing that contract. But for our school right now, it's only half half year, but I know in some of the bigger schools and, and it's a fee, like it's $950 a year for the fee. But with that fee, you get um, a person from wise who will come in and they'll do the, the workshops in school. Uh, there's an economics workshop that, that they do and there's a speaking workshop and I think there's four or five workshops that they do inside a school. And that's part of that $950 to be honest with you, because it goes up every year. Um, and is that something that the students pay or is that something that the school pays? The district, the district pays the, you know, comes out of our contractual, our contractual expense line for our, our building. Um, yeah, the district pays the 950. The students don't pay anything other than yeah, maybe to get to their internship experience. Very interesting. And I'm yeah. assuming that there's some sort of application process so that you can evaluate you know, you don't want to make the investment if the person is not someone who's going to make it through the program. Correct. So we, we have checkpoints where you have to be, you know, by mid year, you have to have 
this grade and you put attendance on it and everything like that because you don't want a student who's chronically absent or, or right. you know. So we do have checkpoints to get into the program. They have to have an interview with myself and the guidance counselor right now. Um, so timeline wise for us, Thanksgiving, we, we hand out the stuff. It's not me anymore. It, it, it's, I passed it off to a teacher because it's part of that teacher's um, day um, in, built into their schedule. So Thanksgiving, we hand out the information. We go in and tell the um, what it's all about. We actually start recruiting earlier. Like the previous, we'll invite all of the juniors to the presentations. Obviously, it's easier in my building because there's not many of them. Um, but we invite all of the juniors to every presentation that the seniors do so they can see what it's all about. Um, but Thanksgiving, we, we give the info out when they get back before Christmas break, they have to put their application in. After we get back from Christmas break around the, the new year, we review the applications and then we have um, meetings with those students and the review of the application is just a review of their grades. It's a review of their attendance. It's a review of their discipline. Um, and then we interview them and basically, you know, ask them why they want to do it and, and where they think it's going to take them. And, and it's great. And then second half of the year starts. Thank you. Yep. And I know the guy that does it at Hunter. So if it was something that we would be interested in exploring, I'm sure he's done numerous board presentations for us. He would have no issue coming to a board meeting, zooming in um, like this to, to give you, you know, let you guys ask questions of him and the program as well. Any other thoughts or questions? Quick and easy tonight. Well, I'll tell you, you, you can see um, how articulate Ryan is about the work that he does and, and um, the board members who are able to serve on the interview committee, neither of which are here tonight, but the two board members are on the committee uh, would unquestionably agree that, you know, anything that we discussed or threw at Ryan, he, um, he not only knew the right answer, he knew the answer that uh, very potentially would apply to the work that we want to do at RCS or already doing at RCS. And uh, we we are we're going to shamelessly capitalize on the knowledge he's bringing to us, <laughs> and really uh, do some fantastic things. So we're very excited at the prospect of him joining us. All right, I guess that's it. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you soon. Yeah, appreciate Thank your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.